Hello everyone, my name is Irene and uh, I'm a software engineer. I'll be talking about some tips and tricks and things you should do to give you a better chance of getting your interview, your software engineer or software developer interview and uh, give you a better chance of actually getting the job. I'm currently in Cape Town, South Africa and uh, that's why I'm shooting the video so it's the sun is setting so I'm working against the light. Why I decided to do this video is when I was starting with my job application process or interview process I didn't know much about these things. This taught me some lessons along the way and I thought I'd share some of those things and to help you if maybe you're in college or out of college and you you want to get a software engineer, a software developer or a programmer kind of job and uh, this will give you a better chance and prepare you better and give you a higher chance of actually getting the job. These interviews come down to preparation, preparation, preparation. Preparation is the most important thing when it comes to getting the interview in the first place and actually doing well, pretty well in the interview. So you have to prepare a whole lot. And I'll give you some of the steps that I took and some of the steps I suggest you take just to give you a better chance of doing really good. So I'll divide it into three sections. And uh, the first one will be before you actually go into the interview and during the interview, what you should expect and uh, or what you should do and finally after the interview what you should do after the interview is done uh, most of these interviews all they're trying to test is mainly your problem solving skills so they don't really care much of which language you're using so it's mainly comes down to how you're thinking about solving a problem how you solve the problem and uh, your answer in the final run how correct is it so sometimes it doesn't really matter you may not get the correct answer, but they enjoyed or they liked, but they liked how you solved the problem and that could actually learn you the job. So it's all about how you explain. You have to explain things clearly. You have to communicate. They also test your communication skills. That's important. So you don't go straight into writing the problem. You first explain what you're understanding by the problem. And then finally, you get to actually write it, the code for solving that problem. We start with before the interview, before you actually start the application process for a job. You take it for a month and that month is solely dedicated to preparation. So it is a sacrifice because no good things come easy. So you must work hard and that will definitely give you a better chance of doing well and build your confidence. It's all about confidence. Once you're confident, you can actually attempt even the tougher questions a lot better than if you were nervous and had and were anxious because you didn't prepare a lot. That month uh, you will get a notebook where you'll be writing these problems and you'll also get a whiteboard because most of these interviewers they have a whiteboard in their rooms where they're carrying out the interviews and that's where you're going to write and explain the problem that you're working out. I would suggest first you get these two books and read them one after the other. So by the time you get to the next one, you're more learned, you're more, you've got a lot more practicing and you're feeling a lot more confident. One is programming interviews exposed. The other one is cracking the coding interview. So those two books are very, very important. Those are the first things that you get when you're starting your preparation process. You get your notebook, you get your whiteboard and your two textbooks, that's the programming interviews exposed and finally cracking the coding interview. So once you have your four tools, you're set. These are some of the topics that I'd suggest you prepare and the books will also talk about them quite a lot. Uh, the first thing I'd suggest is get the theory around the problem and then get to solving or attempting the problem and finding your solution to a problem. I'll leave links to common interview questions and places where you can get theory explanations for some of these topics i'll leave them in the description below well for example you read about link lists you know what a head node is a tail node uh what traversing a link list and such basics are very important before you actually start working out a problem i will divide these topics into five sections uh the first section will be data structures the second section will be algorithms the third section will be basic uh, principles that you should know 
and these principles usually help you attempt problems within the data structures and algorithms. Then you'll also have number four, your database knowledge. You have to have knowledge about databases. And then finally, you have to have some knowledge about networks. I'll give you some topics within each of these that you should know extensively. Get the theory first and then solve the problems. Number one, you must know array lists, link lists, and you must know your stacks, queues, then you also have to know your binary trees. Number six, you must know your hash tables. So with all this, it's mainly you first do your theory, you understand the theory behind it, why you choose to use them and everything, all the jargon and everything around each topic. So you must know them, then you solve problems after getting the theory, understanding of the topic. Six, I ended with hash tables. So you must know those six topics to the core. And once you know them, you'll give yourself such a good chance of doing extremely well in your interview. Then we go straight over to the algorithms. Algorithms, uh, you must know your sorts. So your sorts include things like insertion sort, selection sort, bubble sort, merge sort, and uh, which other one am I forgetting? Let me see. And your quick sort finally. And you these look like a lot, but once you actually get into it and practice them a lot, they will come so easy by the end of the whole preparation process. So you don't get scared at all. And then you also know your search uh, that comes your linear search and your binary search. So you know your sorts and you know your search. And then uh, you, another thing you must know is your breadth breadth first search. And then the next one is the depth first search. I've finished talking about the algorithms that you should know. And the third section is the concepts. And the concepts, the first one you must know is recursion. So like how I said before, theory, then how you solve problems using recursion. And these concepts mainly help you to solve problems within the algorithms and then within the data structures as well. So you have to know these things. And then the second one is the big O notation. So that is so, so important. And it helps you know things in terms of time complexity and space complexity. They'll know, they'll either ask you these things or if they don't ask you, you should still tell them how you solving the problem in terms of the big O notation and how you're using recursion. Another thing is iteration. Of course, iteration is the most known method of solving problems but usually after you solve iteration if you've not suggested the recursion method they'll ask you if you know anything about recursion so that's very very important uh the next thing uh is bit manipulation uh, another thing is design patterns they'll ask you what are design patterns how to use them do you know any of design patterns out there so you know you have to know things like the singleton design pattern and then the factory design pattern so that's very important and then finally I would say the memory and uh, that you must know how much space a specific calculation in memory how much space it takes up so that's key to know and uh, once you're finished with your concepts uh, of course all in all, you must have your object-oriented design concepts all in place and uh, good coding practices and you have to know how to arrange your code properly and write code neatly and uh, yeah, that's really important. And then once you've finished with that, uh, you go straight to the databases. That's the fourth section, databases. So you have to know things like how to design databases or ask you how to design a database probably of a store, an online store. So you design how the database would look. So that's important to know. And uh, of course, they'll ask you how to write, how to insert something into a table in the database or how to delete something, how to update something. So you have to know your joins as well. The jargons are very important. So you know your database lingo. And uh, as well, you have to know your normalization. Yes, normalization is very, very important. And once you were done with the databases, They'll also ask you maybe some networks related questions, things like UDP, what's UDP, TCP, uh, HTTP. So they'll ask you this, uh, the advantages maybe of using TCP over UDP. When will you use it? So you have to know the when, the how, 
and uh, the what what it is uh, yeah those are the five sections I should know straight down mem as I told you earlier theory then calculation of the problem so that is basically it um, if you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like me to clarify please leave that in the comments below I hope you get the interview prepare 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 practice 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 and uh, hard work will eventually pay off some sometimes like myself I didn't get my first ones but you just keep at it keep working hard work put in the work sacrifices are important and you get the fruits of your labor when you're actually doing the job that you want to do and it's giving you satisfaction okay bye guys and I'll see you next time bye.